Hi everyone, this video will be about this wonderful shield, ESP8266. This shield has one problem, it's good but my shield's motor driver is not working, L293D, it's just not working. I tried everything, nothing fixes it, but anyway I gotta show you something, so so in this video I will show you how I connect to this shield ESP8266 connect this thing to it now we will build it quickly and one more thing about this shield I will leave in the description this scheme where they will be highlighted which outputs contain motor driver pins. They are marked here actually. Right here in this place. All of them are signed. But another problem of ESP8266 is that its output physical pins, which are D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, they are different in the program. For example, when we work in the program and want D1 to receive PWM signal, then we need to choose GPIO5, it means in program we need to choose variable pin number 5, not D1. Such a nuance as it is, but, but it is not difficult if you have scheme like mine in front of you, it appears to be much easier. Ok, let's start. Now we build the swivel platform. And this time we will use, once in another video I already built a platform like this one. We will use this one, MG90S. It has metal gears. I can't even turn the gear with my fingers. You have to make great efforts to do it. And also I will find out that the electronics here are better than in such blue ones the electronics inside this. The controversial issue is which is better metallic or plastic gears. Metallic ones can transmit more power and plastic ones are more wear resistant. So something like that? Ok, now I will build it. Won't show you the whole process because it will be a rain dance again. For example, these rockers. Let's start with something simple these rockers, that goes from servo itself. They are all different types, but none of it fits here, so I need to cut it a little bit. And to attach it all, this rocker I need to attach right here, so to cut it as well, and etc. So when I fully build it, I will show you the result and then we will connect it to controller. Ok, so it's done. I built this suspension system. Servo motor appeared to be a little bigger, so, so I had to cut here the piece of fastening ear. I did it with the help of these snippers, I will leave a link to it in the description. It's very handy, and also it was very fast and easy to cut rockers using it. This one and the one at the base. It's very handy. Gotta say, I don't know what would I do without this device. Would cut it all with Dremel, I suppose, because this knife, even with a new blade, cut rockers very badly. With nippers it was much easier. So for what purpose I built it? To connect it to the shield, which was unpacked in previous video. So right now, just connect it to the shield, it's very simple. Therefore, this motor connect to 8th and another one to 7th. I'll start with this one to 7th. Another one to 8th. 
Okay. I connected servo motors very comfortably to the shield. Right here I will be able to attach something later. Maybe video, cam or anything else. Here I will attach two motors. And when I have video cam here, I will have, I don't know, kinda little car with video camera. To attach here webcam, that would be fun. The reason why I make it is to attach the whole thing to blink. Right now I will add two more motors here. Upload you the sketch. We'll show you how simple this sketch is. It's very simple. And... In future it will be a car driven with the use of Wi-Fi control. Same principle as radio control actually. Ok, let's head to the next part. A little bit about the code. To make it work, I combine two standard Blink lessons, which are servo control through the Ethernet shield and command transmission using joystick of two Blink axes. Another thing is that I want to describe. That you can transmit signal to servo motor from 0 to 180. I transmit even from 10 to 170. Because it's a risk that servo can burn out. Which by the way happened to me, I already burned two servo motors. At this time I set iron one. So basically everything is commanded out. We get out a token at project properties. Type this out a token here. It's quite long. Here type your Wi-Fi name and password. This one is in case if you have Wi-Fi shield. You can do it through Ethernet as well. But connection there is a little bit different, I will show you later. Indicate servo motor X, servo motor Y, get properties. It is from lesson, from Blink library. It gets per one variable the value of two axes X and Y and it assigns to servo motor. Right here Blink makes a connection, enters SSID and pass, a name and a password. Attach to servo motor X and Y. So we get 15th pin logical but physical output is number 8, 13th logical pin is physical output D7. So that's the only complication and the rest is easier. Upload the sketch. Don't forget to choose EPS module. Don't forget to choose port and to upload the sketch. I already have it uploaded, so let's go further. This is the effect we finally will get. To have the opportunity to control servo motor, the swivel platform very smoothly. By the way, the control goes through the internet at the moment, through a very, very distant Blink server. As you can see, practically with no delays. In no time, I'd say it depends from connection quality. But anyway, it works very nice with no delays. I like to see how this platform works. And now about settings. So exit, enter here. In settings there is split or merge. We choose merge of course. To make it clear, this is how the signals are set. It can be done through one virtual variable. You can see the code right here, which you need to type. Why my X parameter is inverted? Because my servo is physically inverted as well. That's why here I have a value from 170 to 10 and here I have from 10 to 170. Outer return is on. As you can see, you can turn it off. And this one is rotation. It means when you turn the tablet screen, should the axis turn with it or not. So let's set it to a turn. Ok, so we are done with settings. 
exited, launch the project. Check the connection. Yes, the connection is good. And let's see what are the differences after we reconfigured it. When I move it, it stays at the position where it was moved. Don't get back to the center. So it stays the position I moved it to. And that is about outer turn. Very simple. As easy as pie. That's all in this video, I suppose. Like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, ask your questions in comments and via BKCom. Goodbye everyone and wish you well. Bye-bye.